Imagine a quiet suburban street, the kind where kids play hopscotch on sidewalks. Then, suddenly, flashing lights pierce through the darkness. A family's peaceful evening shatters as law enforcement officers, armed with a warrant, arrive at their doorstep. This scene, played out countless times, underscores the gravity of criminal searches. It's a stark reminder of the delicate balance between upholding the law and respecting individual rights. This is the world of criminal investigations where the pursuit of justice often begins at the threshold of someone's home, their digital life, or even their own person. The Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution stands as a safeguard against unreasonable searches and seizures. This crucial amendment ensures that law enforcement cannot act on a whim. They need solid grounds backed by probable cause to intrude upon a person's privacy. The stakes are high, a search can unearth crucial evidence leading to the arrest and conviction of dangerous criminals. But it can also unearth nothing, leaving behind a trail of distrust and resentment towards law enforcement. The power to search, therefore, is a power wielded with immense responsibility, demanding careful consideration and strict adherence to legal procedures. At the heart of any legal search lies the warrant, a document issued by a judge authorizing law enforcement to conduct a search. This legal document is not just a formality, it is a cornerstone of due process. It serves as a check on the power of the state, preventing arbitrary or overly broad invasions of privacy. To obtain a warrant, law enforcement must demonstrate probable cause. This means presenting factual evidence to the judge, showing a reasonable belief that a crime has been committed and that evidence related to that crime will be found at the specific location they want to search. The warrant must describe with particularity the place to be searched and the items to be seized. This specificity is crucial. It prevents fishing expeditions, where officers could use a vaguely worded warrant to search for anything they please. The warrant must be laser-focused, outlining exactly what the officers are looking for and where they are authorized to look. This ensures that the search is conducted within the bounds of the law. The world of criminal investigations is a diverse one, and so are the types of searches conducted. From the physical spaces we inhabit to the digital footprints we leave behind, the scope of a search can be vast and varied. Each type comes with its own set of rules and legal considerations, reflecting the unique challenges and sensitivities involved. Let's start with the most familiar home searches. These are often at the heart of high-profile cases, capturing public imagination and raising questions about the limits of police power. But searches extend far beyond our front doors. They delve into the digital realm, where our online activities from emails to social media posts can become potential evidence. Then there are personal searches, which can range from a simple pat-down for weapons to a more invasive strip search. These searches, while sometimes necessary, raise significant privacy concerns and require officers to act with utmost sensitivity and respect for the individual being searched. The nature and scope of a search must always be justified by the circumstances and carried out with minimal intrusion. The sanctity of the home is deeply ingrained in American culture. It's our refuge, our private space where we feel most secure. This makes home searches particularly sensitive, requiring a heightened level of scrutiny and justification. The Fourth Amendment recognizes this sanctity, providing enhanced protection to homes against unreasonable searches. When officers arrive at a doorstep with a warrant to search a home, they are stepping into legally and emotionally charged territory. The warrant must clearly state the areas within the home they are authorized to search and the items they are seeking. Any evidence found outside the scope of the warrant could be deemed inadmissible in court. For example, if a warrant authorizes a search for stolen jewelry, officers cannot use that warrant to rifle through someone's computer files or personal diaries. The search must be confined to areas where jewelry is reasonably likely to be found. This ensures that the search remains focused and proportionate to the alleged crime. Section 5. The Digital Fingerprint Navigating Online Searches in today's digital age, our online lives are often an extension of our physical selves. We store personal information, communicate with others, and engage in a wide range of activities online. This digital footprint has become a treasure trove of potential evidence for criminal investigations, leading to a surge in digital searches. Emails, social media posts, browsing history, online purchases, all of these can provide valuable insights into someone's activities and intentions. But accessing this digital information is not a free-for-all for law enforcement. 
The same constitutional protections that apply to physical searches also extend to the digital realm. Just like a physical space, accessing someone's computer, phone, or online accounts requires a warrant supported by probable cause. The warrant must specify what types of digital information officers are authorized to access and for what purpose. This ensures that digital searches are not overly broad, sweeping up vast amounts of personal information unrelated to the crime under investigation. Section 6. The Body as Evidence, Personal Searches Perhaps the most intrusive type of search involves the search of a person's body. This can range from a simple pat-down for weapons, known as a Terry stop, to a more invasive strip search or even a body cavity search. Given the highly personal nature of these searches, they are subject to strict legal guidelines and require a strong justification. A Terry stop, for example, allows officers to briefly detain a person and pat them down for weapons if there is reasonable suspicion that the person is armed and dangerous. This type of search is limited in scope and duration, designed to ensure officer safety during an investigation. More invasive searches such as strip searches or body cavity searches generally require a higher level of suspicion and often a warrant. These searches are only permissible when there is probable cause to believe that the person is concealing evidence related to a crime. The manner in which these searches are conducted is also subject to scrutiny, with courts emphasizing the need for dignity and respect throughout the process. Section 7. Balancing Act – Law Enforcement versus Individual Rights The power to conduct searches lies at the heart of effective law enforcement. It allows investigators to gather evidence, apprehend suspects, and bring criminals to justice. But this power is not absolute. It is tempered by the equally important right to privacy enshrined in the Fourth Amendment. This creates a delicate balancing act. On one hand, law enforcement needs the tools to investigate crimes and keep communities safe. On the other hand, individuals have the right to be free from unreasonable government intrusion into their private lives. Striking the right balance is crucial for a just and equitable society. When searches are conducted legally and with respect for individual rights, they can be a powerful tool for justice. But when searches are abused, conducted without proper justification or with disregard for constitutional protections, they erode public trust and undermine the very foundations of a free society. Section 8. When the Dust Settles – Impact of Searches on Cases the outcome of a criminal case often hinges on the evidence presented in court, and that evidence more often than not, is the direct result of a search. A search warrant executed properly and yielding crucial evidence can be the deciding factor between a conviction and an acquittal. Take for instance a case involving drug trafficking. A search warrant allowing law enforcement to search a suspect's residence might unearth a stash of illegal narcotics, paraphernalia, and financial records indicating drug sales. This tangible evidence, obtained through a legal search, would significantly bolster the prosecution's case. Conversely, a search deemed illegal, perhaps due to a faulty warrant or procedural errors during the search, can have devastating consequences for the prosecution. The exclusionary rule, a cornerstone of American jurisprudence, dictates that evidence obtained in violation of the Fourth Amendment is inadmissible in court. Section 9. The Thin Blue Line Ethical Considerations The power to search is not simply a legal matter, it carries immense ethical weight. Law enforcement officers entrusted with this power operate in a complex world where legal boundaries intersect with moral obligations. Upholding the law while respecting the dignity and rights of all individuals is a constant tightrope walk. The temptation to cut corners, to bend the rules in the pursuit of a conviction, can be strong but succumbing to that temptation undermines the very fabric of justice. Every search, every interaction, must be conducted with integrity, fairness, and a commitment to due process. This means treating all individuals with respect, regardless of their alleged crimes or social standing. It means being mindful of the impact searches have on individuals, families, and communities. And it means holding ourselves as law enforcement professionals to the highest ethical standards. Section 10. Safeguarding Freedom – The Future of Criminal Searches As technology advances and the lines between our physical and digital lives continue to blur, the landscape of criminal searches will undoubtedly evolve. New challenges will arise, demanding innovative approaches to ensure that law enforcement can effectively investigate crimes while safeguarding individual rights. 
The increasing use of encryption, for example, presents a significant hurdle for investigators seeking to access digital evidence. Striking a balance between national security interests and the need to protect individual privacy in the digital age will require ongoing dialogue and collaboration between policymakers, technology experts, and law enforcement. The future of criminal searches will likely involve greater use of technology, from advanced surveillance techniques to predictive policing algorithms. While these technologies hold promise for enhancing public safety, they also raise important questions about privacy, due process, and the potential for bias.